factor, right? Mm -hmm. Times uh, 14x, that good? Okay, yeah. so if we have something to a power, the power comes out, we don't touch it, reduce the power by one, and then we take derivative of what's inside. That's exactly what we have to do with this y. We look at that y as being something to a power. So first thing we do is we drop the two out front, right? We rewrite the y, but to the first power. But then we say, all right, now we need to go take derivative of what's in here, right? What's the derivative of a y? y prime, not one. If it was x, it would be one. Does that, that help? So just, just to make sure you're, you're seeing this. <clears throat> I'm not done, I'll come back to that. But look, what if I asked you to take derivative of y cubed? What would the derivative of that be? 3y three y. Three y squared times y prime. All right, the three comes out, y squared, then derivative of y is y prime. What would the derivative of five y to the sixth b? 30, 30 y, y to the fifth, fifth times y prime. So you're always going to have that y prime pop out. Do you see that? That y prime is always popping out. So the derivative of y squared, 2y, oh, this looks like a 1, sorry, 2y times y prime. Yeah, now there is something kind of, this might confuse you even more, I don't want to even say this, but I will. You might be asking yourself, like, well, why didn't we do that on x? Like, do the same thing, right? So let's, let's try it. If we did it, the two, we would get 2x, right? But then times the derivative of x, right? x prime, sort of. But the derivative of x for us is 1. And so don't you still get, like, 2x? It's just the difference on the y is that the derivative of y is not 1. The derivative of y is y prime. Yeah, y is a function of x. So y is a function of x, and that is, why, yeah. that is why the derivative of x is 1, but the derivative of y is y prime. Yeah, not, yeah. So yeah. that's still going to be hard. Yeah, yeah, it is tricky. It is tricky. OK. Yeah? It's just, I mean, we're just touching the, the surface here, so. Uh, we're not done. Here's where we are with that. y prime x plus y. Now notice I did 1 times y is just y, right? Minus 2x equals 2y y prime. That's where we are. Now what we need to do is get, get all of our y primes on one side of the equation. Because I'm trying to figure out what y prime is. So let's, let's move this guy over. Well, you know what? Let's move this guy over here. So we'll have y minus 2x equals 2y y prime minus y prime x. So do you all see I just grabbed that one and moved it over to this side so it made it a minus? Notice that everything on the right-hand side has a y prime. Do you see that? These both have y prime. So what I'm going to do now is factor a y prime out. So I pull a y prime out of this and a y prime out of that, pull it out front, and this is what would be left, right? One final step to get y prime by itself. Does anyone know what I need to do if I want to get y prime by itself? Divide. Divide this on this side, 2y minus x. Divide that by this, or on this side, 2y minus x. And these will cancel, right? And, and what will you still have on the right-hand side? What's on the right-hand side? Uh, y, prime. y prime, which is what we're trying to find, right? And on the left-hand side, y minus 2x over 2y minus x. There's your answer. That's why. Why is it called implicit? Yeah, yeah. Um, the name implicit, we are saying that y, th there's two ways you can write an equation relating x and y. If we say, if I write this, then I, we would say that y is an explicit function of x. Meaning, if you give me x, I give you y. 
It's very simple. Y can be isolated. That's called an explicit equation. This equation right here that I started with, you cannot solve for y. You cannot make y equal with something with just x's in it. Anytime you cannot get one variable specifically in terms of another, when you cannot do that, it is called an implicit equation. All right? So because it's an implicit equation, we call it implicit differentiation. That's where the name comes from. All we've ever dealt with here so far are explicit equations. Now we get to deal with implicit ones. Well, you just have to be careful. It's just the way the derivative works is a lot, lot more involved, I guess. <laughs> All right, you look really thrilled about this. I'm, I think you want to see another one. I can tell by looks on your face. Maybe I, should, maybe I should illustrate this a little bit different um, to help you. You know, everything we've dealt, dealt with so far, every, every function we've looked at, we could graph it, and all of these functions would have passed the vertical line test. Does that sound familiar, vertical line test from 1324? It's how you test to see if something is a function. Every, every explicit equation can be written to pass the vertical line test. But what if, what if you have a curve that looks like this? Okay, That's not a function because it fails the vertical line test. But there, it, it is an implicit equation that controls this curve. So what we're trying to do here is kind of, ex again, again, extend what we can do, because you've asked this question, why are we doing all these rules? This allows us to find slopes of tangent lines on curves that are not necessarily functions anymore. So it kind of blows, it blows open the more possibilities of what we can differentiate. Yeah. All right. Now, really in business, these implicits don't come up very often. Really, honestly, they don't. But they do come up for one particular thing, and that's the next section, related rates. And because of that, we cover it. Okay, so let's try something here. Um, I imagine anything multivariable, like when you get into engineering application, it makes a lot of sense, but it may not so much in this class. That's right. When you get something where you're actually looking at the way something travels through yeah. space, it doesn't have, like it can go and go around it, yeah, you know, yeah. so you want to be able to find tangents to something like that. Um, all right, how about this one? 3xy minus 2x minus 2 equals 0. And then I'm going to give you one more thing. I'm going to give you a point, 2, 1. So think of it this way. This right here is some implicit equation. It's some curve in space, all right? And I would like for us to find the slope of the tangent line at this particular point, 2, 1. So that point, 2, 1, lives on that curve. And we're going to go try and find the slope of the tangent line there. So let's do implicit differentiation. Remember, the derivative, of x is, the derivative of x is what? 1 and the derivative of y is what? y prime. I'm going to say that again. The derivative of x is 1, right? The derivative of y is y prime. And the reason why is because we are trying to find dy dx. And x here, being on the bottom down here, means that the derivative of x is 1. The fact that the y is on top means the derivative of y is y prime. All right? Just take that on, just put it in the brain as a fact for now. All right, let's do this. All right, can I do these individually? This, this, and this? Yes. Yes, okay. So let's start with this 3xy. It's a 3y prime. 3y prime? Y'all think? But can you, have to do the product? you have to do a product rule. So look, this is a product, right? 
That's a product between the X and the Y. So I'm actually going to split it like this. I'm going to look at this two things, 3X and Y, right? Those are the two things being multiplied. And now I need to do the product rule on that. So the product rule says take derivative of this, which for us would be what? Just 3, right? Just 3. So we get 3 times what? Y, just Y. No Y prime. Product rule, derivative of this times this, right? Plus, now the derivative of this, which is y prime times 3x. It's so critical that you all see this. That is the product rule on those two right there. Derivative of this times this plus derivative of this times this. Are we done here? What with this one are we done? Yes. yes. Moving on. Minus. Now, the derivative of 2x is just minus 2, right? So there's nothing crazy about this one. And then minus the derivative of 2, which is 0, right? So I don't need to write anything else. Equals 0. But you still need to maintain the equal sign. So equals 0. All right, so here's where we are. We've got 3y plus, let me write it this way, 3xy prime minus 2 equals 0. So I just put those together, 3y. I, I put the 3x in front of the y prime, minus 2 equals 0. And we're trying to find the slope of the tangent line at a specific point, right? So I need to take this and solve it for y prime. Let's get y prime by itself. So how about we move this over and move this over, subtract it. So we would have 3xy prime equals 2 minus 3y. You all still with me? And finally, to get y prime by itself, divide both sides by 3x. Why isn't it negative 2 if we just take the negative It two was two. negative, and we moved it to the other side, which made it positive. Because you're really, technically, we're adding 2, adding 2. Right? We add 2 over here, it goes away. We add 2 to 0, we get 2. And then over here, it's the opposite. We're subtracting 3y, subtracting 3y, so it becomes minus on this side. Then this, we're dividing by 3x, dividing by 3x, so this is it right here. That's our derivative. Now, we're not done, right? That's not the answer. Are there any questions, though, on where I got this? We still need to figure out what the slope of the tangent line is, right, at this particular point. So that's our x, and that's our y coordinate, right? So we're just going to take those and plug them in right here for x and for y. So the answer to the question, the slope of the tangent line, is that y prime equals 2 minus 3 times what? 1, good. And then over 3 times what? 2. So just replacing, you know, that y with 1 and that x with 2, and you get negative 1 sixth. Oh, wow, I didn't realize what time it was, sorry. Okay, so what I'd like for you to do to get started in 11.5 is to try problems 13 through 23 odds, okay. Well, that's actually the whole assignment. <laughs> that is the whole assignment. You See how you do on that, okay? See how it goes. Um, I want to have a quiz over this, implicit differentiation, because I think it's that important that the next class you're ready to go with it. So how about I promise you one? a quiz next class on implicit differentiation to start. It'll be just like this. I'll give you an equation, I'll give you a point, and I'll ask you for the slope of the tangent line. So please practice that. Let me know if you have any trouble with it, all right? Anybody still need their quiz? I ha handed them out earlier. No? Here you go. I'll just go.